let's jump right into things. Um, let me pull up the article here. First, let's take a look at uh, Canelo, for those who don't know. 57-1-2 with uh, 39 KOs, the undisputed champion at 168 pounds, WBA, WBC, Ring Magazine, uh, WBO, IBF. Currently, right now, he does not have any mandatories. We talked about it yesterday, but just to fill you in, um, David Benavidez and David Lemieux are going to be facing each other in May or so, April, you know, May or so, to be the WBC mandatory, but that's not guaranteed. Why? Is because the WBC can just make Canelo the franchise champion. You have David Morrell and John Ryder, who are the two next in line to be the WBA mandatory for Canelo. Both of them think that they should be Canelo's mandatory, but in my personal opinion, John Ryder and David Morrell need to fight, and especially since the WBA is consolidating and getting rid of all those bullshit belts. Now, I would see Canelo fighting John Ryder in the future to be a UK fight, but we talked about that in detail yesterday, so we're not going to go too far down that path. IBF, no mandatory, and as we talked about, Zach Parker and Andrade are in negotiations to fight to be the WBO mandatory. So at 168 pounds, Canelo's free. Now, the rumors that are going around now from ESP in Mexico and ESP in here in the States is that the front runner for Canelo seems to be Dimitri Bivo, 175 pound, the only champion at 175 pounds for the WBA. Mm -hmm. I covered his last fight, been covering his fights for the last uh, few, three, four years or so. Very good fighter to me. He doesn't seem to have that extra gear. You know, as some fighters, as some boxing fans may say, the dog in him. You know, the dog, the D-A-W-G. 19-0 and 0 with 11 KOs, 31 years old. He was even at one point saying he would move down to 168 to fight Canelo. Um, Umar Salomov, that's a fight I covered. Looked like, you know, if he really wanted to, he could have stopped him. Craig Richards looked like he could have stopped him. Lennon Castillo. So he's going the distance with these dudes and dominating these guys. And, you know, but, you know, it's like, bro, like you trying to get the Canelo fight. Show us something. Now, the Joe Smith Jr. fight, Joe Smith hitting in about rounds 10 or 11. I forgot what round it was that had him with these intrusive ads. That had him really questioning, like, you know, like his existence. Wins over Jean Pascal, Isaac Chalemba, Sullivan Barrera, Trent Broadhurst, Cedric Agnew. So he's got some nice, solid wins there, but nothing like really break out, you know, like performance. However, he is highly skilled, and if Canelo was to beat him, he would be getting the scalp of a, of a, of a in his prime boxing fighter like you know like not with the bullshit that a guy like Kovalev had when he was coming into the fight you know he's not the weak link like dude is dude is pretty good you know I would respect highly respect a win for Canelo over Dimitri Bivo you know but if we're being honest I would rather see if it's going to be the first fight of one of these two deals now let me backtrack again the Zone is offering a two-fight deal for Canelo to take on Dimitri Bivo in May and then um, in September or so, Golovkin. Showtime is offering Canelo to take on um, an Al Heyman PBC, Charlo, Jamal Charlo, WBC 160-pound champion, former Canelo mandatory until Canelo was made the franchise champion anyway. Jamal Charlo would have to move up to fight Canelo in May and then fight the winner of David Benavidez, um, David Lemieux, if they fight in May, in September. You see what I'm saying? Now, Canelo, I'm wondering to myself, with what's been going on with PBC and all of these pay-per-views, and now fighters coming out to pretty much pretty much saying that they get like their back end money in payments. Is it different with Canelo? Like, does he get like his full guaranteed money 
or does he have to wait for PBC to break him off? Like, like all right, we're going to give you this guaranteed 30 right here, but you're going to make at least 40 million, but we got to give you the other 10 million later on. You know, I've been hearing for a few years now, that's how PBC has been paying their fighters. It's like, you know, they'll make this money on the back and even with Floyd Mayweather doing an interview earlier um, this week or, you know, last week talking about like how Logan Paul ain't get his money because, you know, he's got to wait for it. Adrian Broner on multiple going on the record multiple times. You know, PBC owes me money. You know, they making me wait for my shit. You know, a fighter like Hugo Centino going on the record saying, you know, yeah, that's how they pay. You know, and, you know, you've been hearing for years, well, that back end money, them extra checks always coming. I'm wondering if 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 Canelo is looking at the zone is like, yo, they giving me just this, this, this straight check, just, you know, straight check. To where I don't know, you know, I don't want to I don't want to, you know, think too far down, but, you know, it is something to think about now for the Golovkin fight. If that does happen for one, Golovkin's got to beat Murata. And right now, you know, Golovkin looking a little shaky to me. And I'm wondering, like, is Golovkin heart, like, really still in it like it used to be? You see what I'm saying? Because he's been on some Hollywood shit the last few years, and he didn't look good against the Revianchenko. Some can say that fight was a draw, and I believe I had it a draw. You know, so him beating Murata on paper, he should be able to beat him. But now, right now, I don't know. And if Canelo and Golovkin 3 would happen in September, Golovkin will be coming off of a tough fight with Murata and then have to move up to 168 because Canelo's not going to fight him at one, you know, um, um, 60. And Canelo may make him even come up as far as the 175. If he beats Bivol and wins that WBA 175-pound title. So let's go back to the rankings and get and tell you, you know, how that's going to go down. So Canelo next, you can say... Five to six fights may be already set up because let me just, you know, hypothetically, right? Let's say if he does go to the zone route, boom. Fight, and, and, this, and this is if Canelo wins and keeps winning. Okay. He beats Bevo, wins that title. Has Golovkin comes up, closes that chapter, boom, Golovkin retires. Then he would have the option of still, you know, going down to 168 to defend his titles against... David Benavidez, if he beats David Lemieux and Charlo, boom, then he can go back up to 175 and fight the winner of Archer Burke BF and Joe Smith, which is supposed to happen in May or June as well. And that would be the winner of that is going to have three titles. So Canelo has a lot of options. And as far as Andre is concerned, let's be honest. Zach Parker, Andre, with the way things are set up and looking at the rankings, Andre ain't going to be getting no shot against Canelo for at least maybe another two, three years, you know, like with the way things are, because we just pretty much, you know, you can you can see the path. It's all pretty much there. So let me run it down to you again. You don't have no mandatories currently right now at 168 pounds, so he can sit on these belts for a while. You know, that's why he'll be able to fight Bevo, you know, take that strap off of him if he wins. Then have a free fight where it's no uh, mandatory obligations. Fight Golovkin just for the money, close that chapter. Then he'll have the option of a unification up here for another undisputed. And that will likely trump the mandatory David Lemieux, David Benavidez, winner of that. You know, the John Ryder, David Morel, if they fight, winner of that. And the um, Zach Parker, um, um, Andre, and then wherever Charlo fits in right there. And the fucked up part about it is all these guys are going to be waiting around too, to try to fight Canelo and not fight each other. But that's why Canelo's the man. So we're waiting for news to be um, announced on that.